The big question is, is it possible to paint a helmet only with such spray cans, which looks like a pro and not bad with poor looking graphics? And that's what I like to find out in this video. So challenge accepted, I will use only these spray cans and try to paint a helmet which looks like pro and the only thing I need is a helmet. That's the helmet I like to paint and before I can start I have to dismount the shield, take the helmet and prepare the surface for the new custom paint job. I will link you all the stuff I use in the description so you can do it yourself if you want to, but the only thing you need to do is you have to follow me during this video. If you miss one step, maybe you mess up with the paint job and I hope I will not mess up and can show you a nice result and a nice new custom paint job on this helmet. So let's start with the preparation and then I can shake the cans and show you how to do a rattle can custom paint job. Believe it or not, this is the first helmet I do since 18 years and I have to find out how I can get rid of all the rubber and the plastic parts before I can prepare the surface of the helmet for the new custom paint job. Look at this. This is the helmet I did 18 years ago and I laminated these horns and the crazy reptile structure. But I had a lot of professional equipment like airbrushes and spray guns and used professional colors to do this helmet. And now I'm a little bit desperate because I have only these spray cans and don't know what to do with this one. But I'm in good hope because it was also the first time I laminated horns on a helmet and this one is more than 18 years old and still in good condition. So I will try to find out how to do a rattle can paint job on this one and how to prepare it for the custom paint job. My first custom painting tip for you is if you have a lot of these small parts and screws, save them in such a bucket and when you want to reassemble this helmet, you know where to find them. I decided not to remove the rubber parts of the helmet because they are glued to the shell and it's a 50-50 chance that I crash and destroy them when I try to remove all these rubber parts. And we come to the next step and what I found are bubbles underneath the original clear coat. It's a brand new helmet and that's a really bad sign because that tells me there's no adhesion between the soft shell clear coat and the helmet itself. And if I paint over these decals and the soft shell clear coat, it's a 100% chance that I run into bad trouble and that I have a lot of bubbles and bad color in the next layers and in my paint shop. And that ruins not only the video, that ruins my day and maybe the next one too. So I have to remove all the original paint shop, I have to remove the decals and that's what I like to do now. Before I can start to send the helmet and to remove the original design, I know some of you get goosebumps right now when they hear send a brand new helmet and remove the original maybe cool design, but that's my job and maybe your helmet is beat up and needs a new paint job, so don't be shy and start to send. But before we can start to send, take a cutting knife and some masking tape in different sizes. I linked you all the stuff in the video description and mask all the rubber parts and don't forget also the inside of the helmet to protect it from any overspray. <laughs>
that's what my helmet looks right now and now comes the fuck oh stop 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 no f word in this video we are family friendly but now comes the part with the f word foo, foo. fabulous famous fantastic the fantastic sanding part and to sand this helmet you need a bucket of water or if you are a pussy a bucket of warm water i am a pussy so i use boiling warm water to put my hands in and i use also some wet sanding paper links in the description put the wet sanding paper into the bucket to make it wet as the name says and then rub the helmet That was the fantastic part of this paint job and I have removed most of the fantastic old coating and the fantastic old design but now comes the part which is much more interesting for you spraying color on this prepared helmet. But be aware if you skip the fantastic part of the paint job you will not succeed I swear I have removed all the things that can cause trouble with the new color and the new design so let's change to the paint booth and I'll show you what you want to see spraying color on this helmet. Do you remember the broomstick paint stand from the last DIY video? I modified it a bit and put a bucket on it and now it's a BB paint stand, a bucket broomstick paint stand. And I guarantee your mom will be amazed when you paint a nice race design on her flower pots. I can put the helmet on it and have to do a small preparation. I have to degrease the helmet to remove any fingerprints and dust from sanding. And then I have to create a little Frankenstein. I have to screw in little screws in all the rivets to save them from any color during the painting process. It's time to choose some color from the paint rack and then we can start with the fun part, spraying color on this helmet. Before I can spray on any of the cool colors, I have to spray on two much more important components. The first one is a plastic primer and the second one a multi-primer. I have different plastic parts on the top of the helmet and also on the shield and to get adhesion on these parts I use the plastic primer and to fill in all the little scratches from sanding for a smooth surface and also for good adhesion I use the multi-primer on the helmet. So let's spray on these two components and in the next step I swear I will spray on cool colors. You are so wrong if you thought the wet sanding party was over. It has just begun and these are the steps which make the difference between a poor looking design and a high quality paint job. You need a perfect and even surface and when you're done this helmet must be a slick looking helmet and then you can try to paint any color on this one. I will skip this because it's every time the same. Wet sanding paper, a bucket with piss warm water and then rub the helmet. Ready for the first cool shot of color? I will use Montana Metallics and the color code is Graphite Metallic and I will do one big shot. That means push down the cap and never let it go when applying color. For all the ladies of you, do it as you will apply hairspray on your head. So keep in mind, push the cap down and never let it go.
Done. Next quick custom painting tip for you guys. If you do something new or something the first time, do it on a small piece or on a test plate. When the small piece went wrong, it's a pain in the ass, but when the complete helmet went wrong, this is a huge kick in the ass and also a punch in your face. It's much easier to repaint such a small part than the complete helmet. The next step is to spray on blue squares on the shield and also on the helmet. This turned out pretty nice, so I can start with the helmet and to do so, I use fine line tape. This is available in different sizes and different colors and I will link you some in the description if you want to order it yourself. So let's mask the helmet and let's spray on the blue squares. I will divide the helmet in four sections and to find the center point I use the rivet holes as the orientation and also this line as the center line of the helmet. I will mask this one first and then a second one to mark four sections of the helmet. When you stick on this masking tape, do it as simple as possible and search for reference points on the helmet. One reference point is the line between the rubber part and the helmet itself underneath this rivet. You have this point on both sides, right and left side of the helmet, and you can end up with this line at the back of the helmet. color code is signal blue and I will do a light coating. That means I spray two or three dusty coatings on all the areas which should be blue and so I can avoid that the blue color leaks underneath the masking tape. That was pretty simple and most of you are able to do that, but now it's time to play the big boys game. And what I will do is that. If you like to spray a design like that, you have a much higher risk to fail if you don't know what to do, but you have also a much cooler looking design. And what I will do is, I will use normal vinyl stickers, stick them on the helmet, respray the helmet in slightly different shades of silver and blue, remove the stickers, and add also a sparkling effect to all the blue areas. So let's go ahead and I will show you how not to fail. These are normal vinyl stickers and you can find them online. Search for vinyl decals or vinyl stickers. And what I will do, I will stick them on the helmet in a random setting, spray a light silver and a darker blue, remove them and I get what I have done on the shield. The color of the stickers doesn't matter because I use them only as a mask and will remove them after I've sprayed the color. So you can order them in the color available or in different colors if you want it. I 
I masked all the blue areas and so the helmet is ready for the next color. Same as the last time, I will spray dusty coatings on all the silver areas and I will use Montana Metallic, color coat is silver. I will do the same like last time, dusty thin layers of color and I will use Montana Gold. The color code is Ultramarine and that's the last color before I can apply the sparkling effect. Now comes the part which is as fantastic as sanding the helmet. It's not really the same but maybe 90% as fantastic as sanding and that's removing all these little stickers. So don't be annoyed when doing this job. I'm ready to apply the topping on this cupcake. I masked all the silver areas again, removed all the stickers and now I can apply the glitter. There are a lot of flakes in this can and they look like these sweet candy pearls on a cake. And I can do a big shot, one shot, because I want a lot of these flakes on my helmet. If you have done all the stuff like I did, your helmet should look like this. And if it does, you're really good at custom painting. But when you think that this is a game without any pain, you're absolutely wrong. I made a mistake and got in trouble and I'd like to show you what happened. Check the O. I ripped off some of the first color with the sticker because I made a mistake not more than a tenth of a second and I told you not to do it. In the first step I told you to push down the cap and never let it go when applying color. And what did I? Check this. I let the cap go. A tenth of a second. I let the small cap go and it punched me right in my face. And that's the result. Now I have to fix this later, but I like to show you a step which can save you from any of these problems and which helps you to produce a high quality paint job which divides your one from the spray can shit. We have gaps in between every layer of color and we have to fill these gaps and we have to make sure to produce a durable surface where we can stick on more stickers for more color on the helmet. And to do that, I use the Montana varnish and I will apply three to four layers of this varnish 
to produce a smooth surface and to make sure not to rip off more color of the design I have applied on the helmet. So let's change the paint booth, let's save the design and then I can apply more color on the helmet. And that is what it looks like after four layers of clear coat. Now it's time for some more wet sanding. So take your bucket with water and if you are a big boy and know what you are doing, use 800 grit wet sanding paper. And if you are afraid to remove any color when sanding, use 1500 grit wet sanding paper. Put it in the bucket and then as every time, rub the helmet until you reach a flat and smooth surface. We are not far away from the finish line, but we have to go from this to that. And that's the real challenge. We have to stick on some more stickers as masks, spray the yellow sun and also the red lettering. And the question is, can we succeed this challenge? I succeeded on the right side, but another question is, can you do it as well? So I like to do the left side together with you and I like to show you the way to success. Before I can start, I have to make sure that I will do both sides in the same position. And to do that, I have to find reference points. A good one is between the sun and the cross, and I can mark it on the opposite side of the helmet. I use this orange tape because I like the color, but you can use any tape you like. And for the stencil, I use normal vinyl tape. I remove the inform. And now I have only the outside of the sticker, the sun and the bull, and I will use this as the stencil for the white outline. And to transfer on the helmet, I can use some masking tape. And now I have to find the right position on the helmet using my reference points. I wrap the helmet in some paper, did the same masking with the letters, and now we can apply some white. I will use Montana Gold, the color code is Shop White. Next I have to paint the sun on the helmet and I will use the inside of my sticker. Stick it on the helmet to find a reference and then I can stick the outside on the helmet. Same as every time I mask the hand with paper, the color is Montana Gold, color code Pure Yellow.
are so close to the finish. The last color is the red. I masked the white outline to save it from overspray. Masked with some paper. Now it's time for the paint boost. I spray on some red, demask the helmet, and then we can play the next clear coat game. Again and again, the same steps. Masking, putting the helmet on the bucket, and spraying some color. Color is Montana Gold, color coat, shock red. Before we can take this helmet for a ride, we have to invest some time in the finish and also in the clear coat. And that's a gameplay of clear coat and sanding. That means I will apply clear coat on all the logos, sand them flat, apply clear coat, sand them until I have a perfect finish. And then I will apply a last layer of clear coat, the finishing clear coat. I will not show you all steps, but I like to show you the finished helmet when it's done. Can you see the gaps on the edges of the colors? That's what I like to get rid of, so I have to sand the helmet until I have a smooth surface. It's time for the last big shot of clear coat which gives the helmet its brilliant and high gloss finish. I remasked all the rubber parts, which makes it easy to demask them when the clear coat is on. I will use again the Montana varnish, so let's go ahead and finish this helmet. to paint a helmet only with these spray cans? Yes it is. Is it cool? Maybe. Is it easy? On a range from 1 to 10, 1 means your little sister can do it with her crayons and 10 is you need 20 years of custom painting experience. Maybe it's a 7 or 8. More 8 than 7. Does it look professional? You decide. That's it. So let me know in the comments what I should paint next and don't forget to give the flower pot back to your mama. Goodbye and see you in one of my next videos.